Hello, Susan. And I can't hear you because. Hello. So when when do you want me to apply the host code and all that stuff? Should Are I you, do it now? Sure. Um, okay. All right. I don't really know. I don't know anything about all of that. Oh, okay. Um, it's just more of a timing thing because right, Sherry's instructions are don't forget to do the the live uh, captioning and um, all that stuff. So uh, I'll wait another couple of minutes. So, okay. Yeah, it is, it is being recorded. You know, she's really organized. She gives um, like this nice page checklist of instructions that, like, if you actually read it, like, oh, I know oh, what to sense. do. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Very right. Good. right. <laughs> It's that, oh, read the instructions. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, how's your summer off? I hope it's off to a good start, other than the good. extreme heat. Yeah. No, I have a pool in my backyard. So I was in that on the weekend, and it was the first weekend you could be in it because yeah. it hasn't been that hot. Right. right. So it was good. All right. Um, we have a pool too, but. Um, uh, I think my equipment is old and uh, I'm uh, thinking like time to replace the filter and all this stuff because uh, it's, uh, it's a losing battle sometimes. Yes, it is. It's yeah. always something. Yeah. Yeah. Always something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of annoying, but yeah. I use it all the time. I'll yeah, use it great. all summer. So yeah. Yeah. Anyway. yeah. That's excellent. Yeah. I use it more than my kids. Yeah. Yeah. All right at this point in time. Right. Yeah, no, that's, 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 it's yeah. entertaining anyway. Yeah, no, that's good, yeah. Peaceful. Yeah, lovely. Um, and you're, you're, you're out the week of August 23rd, right? Yes, so I come that's... home actually the, the day after. So I leave on the 11th of August to go to Prince Edward Island. Oh, nice. Yeah. That sounds fantastic. Uh, um, and how about you? You have vacation plans? Um, yeah, the last week of July. Um, so, um, and yeah, and then um, maybe actually um, that uh, summer, all of that week that, um, the, the week of the the last week of August. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah. second to last week. So um, but yeah, we're all just figuring it out. So, right. It goes by fast. It really does. Um, yeah. And so, it's a shorter, shorter season this year because we haven't had all that much heat. Right. Yeah. 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 But yeah. September is usually beautiful. Yeah. Greetings. Greetings, Matt. Hey, how's it going? All Hi. right, how are you? Enjoying some office air conditioning, I trust. Um, yeah, it's exactly what I, I always enjoy, everything at the office, so. <laughs> right. Okay, so I'm gonna follow these instructions and uh, All right, I claim the host. All right, I've made Bill the co host. And I have 
turn down the caption. Hello, Megan. Hello, Bill. Hi. All right. Welcome back. Um, how are you doing? Yeah. It's great here. Much cooler than Texas. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's very hot in Texas right now. I'm, yeah, un, uncontrolled, like over 100 every day. Brutal. Brutal. All right. Well, we get, we gave you a little bit. What Sunday and Monday? Uh, Sunday. Yeah, a little, a little reprieve. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, fantastic. Um, the um, so I guess it being seven o'clock, we should call our meeting to order, and um, I will read our notice of meeting. And uh, it's nice to see everybody. Um, consistent with the governor's orders, extending certain provisions of the open meeting law, every effort will be made to allow the public to view and or listen to the meeting in real time. If you do not have a camera or microphone on your computer, you may use the following dial-in number, meeting ID, and passcode that are printed in the agenda. Please only use dial-in or computer and not both as the audio feedback will distort the meeting. This meeting will be audio and video recorded. In compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act, this location is accessible to people with disabilities. Wakefield provides reasonable accommodations and or language assistance free of charge upon request. If you are a person with a disability and require information or materials in an alternate format, or if you require any other accommodation, please contact the town's disability coordinator, William Renault, town engineer at 781-246. <laughs> 6308 as far in advance of the event as possible. Every effort will be made to grant your request. Advanced notification will enable the town to make reasonable arrangements to remove an accessibility barrier for you. All right. Um, the, uh, so let's um, let's do our call to, call to order and roll call. Um, so uh, uh, Megan, it's great to see you. Uh, Megan Mansali. Here. All right, Bill Spaulding, it's great Here. to see you too. Nice. Thanks. Um, yeah, uh, Matt Lowry. Here. All right, fantastic. And Theo Noel, I'm here. So, um, and we know, um, and we are uh, joined by Susan Alt, um, our clerk, and we know that Jim Hogan is not available for this meeting. So we do have a quorum with four members. Um, uh, second item on our agenda is approval of the minutes. Um, I trust everyone's read them and does anybody have any comments? Uh, a motion and a second. I'll make so a motion to approve the minutes right. as presented. Second. All right, thank you. Um, all in favor? Uh, uh, Matt? Yes. All right, Megan? Yes. Bill? Yes. And myself, yes. Um, uh, all, um, all in favor. All right. So um, uh, our third item on the agenda is to discuss procedures for changing names. Um, and Bill, thanks for um, emailing out a draft bylaw. Um, I'll turn it over to you. Where, where would you like to start? Well, um, two weeks went, the time between meetings went pretty fast and yeah. I did work on a draft right after the meeting and got that out to Tom Mullen recently. He got feedback really? back to us, yeah. which is so helpful with my lack of experience writing bylaws. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I forwarded that information to you as well to the board to hopefully yeah. save any extra time that each of you might spend marking it up. So I know, <laughs> I know we're all very, very busy but this is something that I feel is really close. And with the feedback from uh, town council, Tom Mullen, I believe we are in the home stretch. So I wanna just ask, um, what do you think is the best way to proceed this evening? Should we go through and review some of the revisions I made with Mr. Mullen's comments? Um, I think that that's where I would like to start. I didn't know if anybody else had any thoughts or Yeah, I comments. think that's a good move. Yeah, I would agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
see. <clears throat> oh, you made me the co-host. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> that makes it a little easier. Um, I think, let's see. I have the Word document up. Yeah. Can you all see the Word document? Let yes. me move it away from some of my Zoom. Okay. So the original draft I sent out, um, some of the comments from Tom Mullen, I picked up here. I, I got about halfway through it today, but a lot of it makes sense. Uh, I mean, honestly, I hate the way bylaws read. They just run on sentences and they're so difficult to decipher what they are. I know they have to compact them into a large book, but where it's electronic, it's not as much of a, I don't know. I go through this with building codes too when I'm reviewing. Uh, a lot of the information is listed. Um, section A, one, two, three, four. Section B, one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D. So I think one of the comments, let me, I don't know if I should share my whole screen or not, but let me see. I'm looking for the comments from, all right, I have them on mail. So did, did each of you get a chance to look at the draft and Tom Mullen's comments? I skimmed it quickly. Okay. Yeah. There was a lot of information in Tom's comments, um, which I uh, appreciate. The information that he organized, like you would expect, responding, a lot of, um, a few of them, three of them really uh, contradict what we were talking about. And as a board, we strongly felt um, that was the right way to go. The first one was uh, about how we want the steps to go, meaning should we have it go directly to the town clerk first? And we discussed that versus going to the fire chief and town engineer for approval. So with Tom's comments, I, I just want for us as a board to react to those. So let me see if I can do this in a better way. I don't, I don't like the way this is setting up right now. So let me copy and bring Tom's comments right into the document. <clears throat> I think this will make it easier. If you don't mind me jumping back and forth, I'll make it as large as possible too. Okay. So if you haven't read this, I'm not gonna read, read it out loud, but you can see this first sentence has been changed from the original draft um, and updated. Um, shall be construed and applied consistently with as opposed to conforms. That was one of Tom's comments. And this bylaw applies to every request change in the name of any way. So the draft that I had was, had like synonyms for <laughs> and many streets and roadways, whatever it might be. So taking that off. So that takes care of <clears throat> items number one and two. Item number three, um, gets into the bullet points, which is the criteria from the draft. And I, I put it into a sentence. And the first item I ran into that would be an issue was Tom's comment on the difference between a public way and a private way, where a public way cannot, ha <clears throat> cannot have changed names within the past 25 years. But he thought in his comments that name change regarding more than 25 years to a public way as a policy matter, private ways would be of much younger vintage and might have been named after the developer's docs or sources of inspiration. Do we as a board want to pull out public way versus private way? Well, I thought we could go for it, Matt, so. Well, normally, even with, with any, if it's a, a newer street, a public 
or a private way, they would have gone through some procedure with the town as it is, mm -hmm. and the name would have been approved. So, so that's that's one thing there. Um, I don't know if we want to call it public or private, or just say uh, any way in town. And I was laughing after a while, saying, "Hey, anyway." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, I, I, go for it. I'm sorry. And I'm sorry. And the 25 years is that where is that from? Is that just? Um, we pulled it out of our research, I believe, without pulling it up. I, Boston and two other towns had 25 years as that magic number. That's, we just pulled it from research. So is there a way to circumvent that if for some reason a, a name? suddenly got associated with something that wasn't pleasant and wanted to change it, so. I, I'm not sure if it's, if it's even that important. I think it just some cities and towns put that in there so people aren't, oh, let's change it back. Oh, let's change it to this. Well, with us having a review process, we could say, well, it was just changed, you know, right. five years ago, so reject it. I agree. So, um, so I, I'm, I'm kind of rethinking that, that if we have a, a procedure in place, we should be able to pick up on if it was changed recently, you know, within 25 yeah. years. Well, let's do this for now so we can move on. If there are any other comments, what I'll do is in the formatting, I'll just do a strike through for now. Is that good? Meaning, anyway, shall not be identical or confusingly similar to other street, to other streets, other ways in town. Yeah, I, I kind of like that. I suppose it's up to if people agree or not. So I like it too. I, as much as we can simplify and condense this, um, to Megan's point in the previous meeting on the 24th of May, it was just really good to like, how do we really make this as simple without a lot of extra verbiage? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay giving up the, the 25 years. Um, I do, uh, yeah, so I, I, I do wonder if we want you know, some sentence about um, the discretion not to change names uh, frequently or something like that. Um, so well, to Matt's point, then the board can discuss that. Yeah. I'm just pulling up. Um, okay. Street naming yeah. file that we've been using. Where did that come from? Let's see, 25. Yeah, I, I don't think you need to pull yeah. it up. Um, Sorry, Boston, Riverside, California, yeah. San Mateo. It was three or four, Wellfleet. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we're fine with the rest of this as far as shall not be used to honor any living person. Proposed name shall not be longer than X letters. How do we find out what X letters would be? We could put 25 there. <laughs> yeah, I I thought there was like, the research was 14 to 20 or something like that. It, Just um... Yeah, there wasn't a minimum, but I remember seeing like the number 20 as in there in our research. Well, we say shall not be generally longer than 20 letters. Um, well, only so many letters can fit on a sign, right? Yeah, right. It, it it may be the size of the sign and the font, the required font. So yes. Um, again, yeah. if someone comes in with a thirty-five letter word, we can say it's too long, too. Yeah. Or, or someone could. 
Right. When I was writing this and trying to combine it and condense it, I feel like we should be able to push it right to what the town already has for naming streets, which I could not find in the bylaws. There was um, ways. Yeah, Tom didn't have anything in there on that criteria. Do we leave this in here or do we take it out or right for now strike through similar to what we discussed for 25 years? I, I can we can we just say shall not be longer than 20 letters or uh, um, or uh, exceed uh, town standards um, or exceed town signage standards. Right, shall not exceed, shall align proposed name. Conform. Well, that might be a two. Conform to town standards for new signs. Is that? And that, Matt, that gets into something you brought up about font yep. size and all that. I mean, obviously they're reflective, the signs are certain colors, depending on, they have the, the town, the new town symbol. Yeah, the one for, the one off of Prospect there for um, 107 Prospect, can't remember the name, Claude, no, oh, yeah, anyway. Clyde Circle, yeah. Clyde, thanks. It, it may be something you also ask the DPW, whoever works in the sign shop, of what's the maximum you can put on there. But really then we have, have bylaws there. that say this is the maximum that you can have on there, but then the DPW changes their standard. Now we have conflicting letters or numbers, number of letters. Well, then that's when you put sh shall conform to, to town standards. Yeah. Okay. So that might be something we need to check at the time. If they change the font, it gets smaller, or then you have more letters. If it gets bigger, then fewer. So I'll highlight items that we need to look up, or I need to look up, <laughs> or do a little bit more research on. So. because some of this stuff might even be in there. So maybe this proposed name shall conform to um, dimension and length of letters. Do we want to get that color, all that? So just maybe just town standards covers all that for new signs. Yeah, I, I would agree. Or, or, or town. Uh design standards because if someone's looking for town standards for new signs they might not find anything but if you say design standards that might be uh, does this come under this doesn't you know where i didn't look was the signage <laughs> um right to Bob Sardella, like the, the signage bylaw. Okay. Shall not be named after corporation, shall not include punctuation. Do we need to have examples or is just the word punctuation enough? Oh. But if they want to abbreviate street and they put a period at the end of ST because it's a long name, that might be something right. they do. Or I don't know, for like Ave, Avenue, do they put Ave period? Or again, we don't want to conflict with what they potentially already do. 
Right. I, I think um, I think you can delete the examples. Um, yeah. Okay. So and I will look up we don't need to do this now. I will look up the town design standards or reach out to our signage guru or I don't know what his actual title is, Bob Sardella. Sign consultant, sign bylaw enforcer. <laughs> Yeah, I would look into like the design standards to see if like, is it punctuation or is it like special characters, right? What's the best way to kind of um, state that? Because as as Matt mentioned, right, like potentially based off character count, like mm -hmm. a, a period to um, could be used, but uh, right, we don't want someone using like a hashtag, or like, right? So, um, uh, so yeah, I guess I would I would like see if there's anything uh and if, if if it falls under current design standards then we could probably just remove that part of yep. the line okay i agree okay section b application steps as follows and this is where there was just some discrepancy and um with tom mentioning that number five here, that the first step should be filing with town clerk. Um, is that, does that become a legal matter? And Tom is totally open to call him at any time. I figured I would wait till our meeting and get board consensus on different things. And of course, other stuff would come up and I will uh, make that phone call or form it in an email, send it to him and set up a meeting to discuss. I just feel we we discussed this at length in our May 24th meeting and we really felt it should go to the fire chief and town engineer for that first step approval as like a nope, sorry, not going to work or comments back before the application is filed with the town clerk. Um, I believe without going back to the meeting video that we felt that way because we just didn't want to waste a lot of time. Was that correct? We just didn't want to waste the town clerk's time. Yeah, it, we don't want to waste the town council's time either by having forwarded, you know, right. once they get going on it, it should be something that's got a clear path. I mean, it's the easiest step is to figure out if this is the same you know, been duplicated or is it similar to another name in town? If it is, right. why even go forward with that? Just pick something else and go with that. But do we really want to send it to the, the fire chief, the police chief and the town engineer? No, I felt fire chief and town engineer was right. And as a, as a board, we discussed that. Yeah, like we went right to fire chief and town engineer. But isn't Tom's sort of, I mean, it, part of his, uh, uh, his process, right? You, you give the paperwork to the town clerk, she takes it to the fire chief and the town engineer and then, um, and then if they concur, she can do the due diligence, uh, confirming the seventy-five percent of signatures, and then send it to town council. I mean, why even have them? You know, we're already telling them they're going to do extra work. So why even have them do that stuff? 
if you're going to bring right. a name to file, you should have done a little bit of due diligence prior to filling out the application and filing it with the town clerk. All right, and this is this is to benefit the person who wants is proposing the name change as well, because at this point they haven't accrued any fees. Yeah. So when when you file it, do you have to pay the fee right then? I, I believe the filing fee is when it goes to the town clerk. The fire chief and town engineer are not going to deal with any fees or any application yeah. in that man manner. So potentially you could pick a name, file it. It goes to the chief and they say, no, it's too similar to such and such. Try right. something Before else. Before signatures. Or... Right. The thing we were trying to, the goal we were trying to get to or the path we we're trying to set is how do we have this person who is trying to propose a new a new name, a change, to quickly go to the town clerk, get the application, go directly to the fire chief with the name and the town engineer. So it's quick, before fee, before anything, before collecting 75% of signatures, I like that inquisitive due diligence side of it before the heavy lifting, for lack of a better term, starts to happen. I agree with this part here, town clerk clerk to send applications to town council for review and they can you know and town will and will send <laughs> the planning board for public hearing i believe that's the town clerk to send applications to town council for review and So the town council does not set the public hearing date, we do. So when you send it to the town council for review, do they have veto power at that point and say no? Yes, they do. Okay. That's in the, that's the bylaw shall be construed and applied consistently with Massachusetts statutory procedure. Okay. Yeah. All right. They can reject it. I don't know if that means they vote on it. I, I remember seeing a vote or majority or two thirds as an option. I, I would assume that they would vote on it and then, yeah. you know, favorable view, then they sent it to us to set the public hearing date. Trying to shorten it and keep it tight. Mm -hmm. Application um, filed with town clerk and reviewed by fire chief and town engineer before submitting application. 
which shall include a list of property owners and residents impacted by proposed change. That was another comment by Tom. Do you really mean signatures of property owners? I would prefer to see residents of the streets or ways. It would be unfortunate if the only people who could petition were owners. And we discussed that as well. And that word impacted, I think became one of our better words that came out of that session. I mean, it could be those impacted, maybe property owners and residents is too much. I mean, does it just go to those impacted or is that too vague? I feel like that's too vague. I just don't understand why we just provide Tom Mullen context. Like maybe he just needs to understand what our reasoning was be yep. behind making these changes in just a conversation versus like, I, I, I appreciate his opinion uh, but I don't think it's right. Like we may, we may, we spent significant time on on these decisions. So I think if he just has context mm -hmm. and understands our reasoning, then we communicate that out. Then maybe we don't need to make as much significant changes tonight as we think we do. Okay. I don't know. That's just my. No, that's a good comment. I, I like that because uh, right here after. I didn't get to condensing the rest of this into paragraphs. And that's something if the board would like me to do, I could bring it into the same context here, share it with the board or just with Theo and send it off to Tom Mullen or have a conversation with Tom Mullen and share um, the context behind it. But I suppose you could have uh, property owners or uh, those individuals um, registered to vote on that street, but to have every person of a residence, if you have, say, a rooming house or, mm -hmm. you know, if you've got something where they've got a couple apartments and do you have to get approval from those people? So they're impacted by it. Their address is changing. Yeah, but um, but how do how do you know how do you confirm that you've got seventy five percent of the people either that reside on that street or not if you don't know who they are and how many potentially are there? Sounds there, like there lies there lies the problem. <clears throat> how do you know you have seventy five percent? Right. I mean, it's fine if we're talking a street that has single family homes. It's different if you have a condominium building that may have some subleases in it and, you know, extended families. So I'm just trying to think of all the things that can follow this up. And then how do you know you, you reached enough people. It may be an outlier, but it, it's a potentially is an issue that I think could confuse things at some point. I, I think our research has the answer. So I, I think um, I think it's good to flag it now, but I, I think I think we have uh, we can copy Wellfleet or or Riverside. Um, okay. I do love the 75% because it just hits it well for if there's three people on the street, that's 100%. If <laughs> I like that. did so with, with 75 percent of of those agreeing to it or i mean 
It just doesn't say. I just look back in the notes. Greater than 75% signatures. Well, signatures means you agreed with it. Agreed. If there's okay. no signature, you didn't agree with it. Yeah, okay. But there lies in your comment, last comment about, okay, we have, let's say it's a longer, larger street. We have 25 signatures. <laughs> Out of what? Will there be a butters or residents impacted or property owners that will also be on that list that there's just no signature? We talked about how it could be um, every property owner or resident impacted has a line and then there's a column with a yes approve, no disapprove. See, the, the thing is, if we go to other than the property owners and you have a house that has, you know, five teenagers in it, do you need, are, are they, would they, if they signed it, would they be residences and would they, would they skew your, your outcome? Whereas if you didn't know there were five people there and you only got one signature, I didn't know you got 75%. So that's why right. just doing residence people that own there, that's verifiable, then you could know if you have 75% or not. Say, yeah, because say you had, say you had four homes and one house had five people living in it and the others only had one potentially you could get 75% of the people residents on that street, but only have one or two homes. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a good point. I, I think the, the common language was certified abutters. Um, that comes from my notes about Wellfleet, Alexandria, and um, I think Boston. Add that to the quandary. Yeah. Okay. Um, the greater than 75, we were in sync with that. Filing fee of does not include street sign fee, does not include. Yeah. So do we leave filing fee out of here and it's on the form? Do we have to have a filing fee in the bylaws? I didn't see it in a lot of other bylaws stuff. I think you'd need to consult with the town clerk and see how much time they believe it's gonna to take to, to do this. And then they will set the fee on the appropriate amount of effort they need to put into it. Which maybe you just put the fee on the form and you just say, you know, pay the fee that's on the form. And then they can right. basically change that as needed. Right. Fees went from 400 to 308 to 390 to 3,849. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> but I think it is good to call out that it doesn't include the street sign fee that we had. Okay. Um, because people will feel misled if we don't yep. call it out. I know, and I was like struggling with creation of sign. And like I, I went through, I think in the draft, I really laid it out as far as um, signage and installation and all that.
I'll, I'll look more for wording and that could be more of a DPW thing. You may want to put signs in poles because yes. yep. Yep. you don't know how many you're going to need. True. That's another one that goes into the town design standards, like what is required. Okay. So I'll track that down with town clerk and DPW. But to Megan's point earlier, um, if we're going to wordsmith this and pull this together, it could be another hour. Um, and this is something I can do with your, um, with the board's consent, share with Theo, and then have a conversation with Tom Mullen reviewing with context the decisions and proposal that we have as a board. Yeah, it's always much easier to deconstruct something than to construct it. So if you want to build something, we can we can rip it apart. Yeah, so. I, I enjoy that. <laughs> it's what we do. So. It's my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the two big ones that I had were the ones that we've kind of gone over, which was the application process, uh, mm -hmm. because we had right like reasons behind our who to go to first. And also the property owners versus right residents and right we had like we you know went through the language on that for a while so I guess you know providing that context and then see what he has to say in regards to our reasonings why those are the from his comments those are the two ones that I was like well you know we put some we put some strong work behind those two items. Right. And sorry if I skipped over anything or made light of any of the other topics, but if there, um, and Theo and Matt, are there any other um, criteria or application steps that we didn't discuss that you feel strongly about that you would like them presented in a different way than what's here? I don't think so. <clears throat> okay. Um, Let's just take a quick look then at the rest of Tom's comments because he did get into very specifics about um, the planning board's quote recommendation, meaning under 85 section 3B, um, decision is for the town council, meaning if, if we refer, refer to that in the application process, and then this is the last part that um, I'd like to talk to Tom and walk through it because it's like the mechanics of the planning board's hearing. I mean, if we just call it out as what it is, I don't think we have to go into detail. I mean, that's why you call out sections in a bylaw, right? So you don't have to go into the detail because then if something changes, it causes, well, it creates the opportunity for uh, conflicting information. Yeah, I, th I think we have an established procedure for public public meetings. Right. How it's posted and the time, and it may be one meeting, it could be multiple, and then we make make a recommendation. And just because we either favorably recommend it or don't recommend it, yeah, you know, or or either we re recommend it, favorably recommend it, or don't recommend it, it doesn't mean that it's going to sway the town council from doing whatever they want anyways. Yes, agreed. Just like a zoning change. Right. Except that it's the town council making the decision. It's not the town with two thirds at a town meeting. Exactly. Right. Maybe that's what he's referring to as being clear about. But I, again, I'll, I'll talk to him about that. So there is one last thing that I'd like to um, bring up as a discussion to make sure we're on the same page because it wasn't something I believe it wasn't something we discussed at the last um, at the 
May 24th meeting. Um, oh, there it is, signs, posts, and installation. I knew I put it somewhere. <laughs> um, that was something I, when I was doing this, I'm like, oh, we didn't talk about that. Maybe it was this last part. How, how does the applicant, how is the applicant notified? And is it the applicant's responsibility to notify all the people that, again, that property owners or um, abutters or however we, we're gonna end up with? Did, as a board, do we have a, um, we want to create this path of like when it is um, the change, whether it's accepted or declined, do we want to instruct the town council on what to do if it is declined or accepted? I feel like this happens a lot in town with decisions. It's just like, you didn't watch the town council meeting. You just don't know what happened with the decision. So you're talking like send another um, notice to all those owners saying, that the, got the original notice, yeah. the second one saying it has been approved. Right, because if it is accepted, then they need to get their license and all their bills and everything changed to the new address. All right, then who's gonna pay that? Then the applicant's gotta pay for that then too. Well, that's what I'm wanting. Applicant right. pays to notify property owners or whatever word we, we get in there. Um, yeah. Impacted by change via or by certified mail is it and this is where my i mean i don't know if certified mail is the correct i mean a small like four streets i can see the person the applicant going and knocking on the door and say hey yeah it was accepted but is that good enough I think it's a valid point. I mean, um, it's the trust factor, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it didn't come up before. But we don't currently do something now for any decisions made, uh, but we could set a precedent. It's nice to notify people. I, it's so easy to, to notify people, right? And it's, I mean, it goes into another part of this, not to bring up another one, but I, I, I put in here a little note about it should be by PDF, um, electronic. Note of proposed change should be sent via electronic file, PDF to the rest of that group that we had discussed during our meeting. Um, is that good enough that electronically, a notification is set to sent to the emails of these property owners. But do we have the emails of the property owners? Exactly. How do you how do you capture all that? Uh, when there's another line on that, <laughs> you know, form that's like, can you read the name, writing? What do you know? What letters they are? I know. I know. I know. And and then how do you verify? That I mean, I'm not. I'm not trying to joke. I'm just saying, like, no. Uh, we have their address, so obviously, so it's I feel like that's uh, <laughs> the only way. Right. It's old school, and, though, well, but I do appreciate that PDF, and I'm sure Matt does, yeah. too. <laughs> well, and I, I also feel it's like some people actually don't have emails, and some people, same way, they're not on Facebook. They're not on different social media. Um, they can't attend tonight's meeting because they don't have internet access. It's, Yeah. All right, I will ask how this is done 
Um, maybe this is actually a good question for Brian McGrail. Maybe it's a good question. Uh, that, that's a good idea. I mean, it could also be a question for the town clerk, right? I mean, and it wasn't included in any of the um, examples that we yes. selected. No, it actually wasn't. I, oh. I mean, I looked back through it and I didn't see anything about. Right. I, I guess you no can one notifies anybody. Right. <laughs> well, maybe they're afraid like we were just laughing about there is no. Yeah, process. I mean, or I mean, I didn't even think of it. So I, I, I think it's a valid point. Well, when I was writing it, I'm like, I think about the way we do work and you probably all do work the same way. It's like, I need that confirmation from the contractor that they received or the building department that they received the set of drawings at this specific date because that's when the clock starts to get everything else going. There. All right, no more time needed on this. I will, unless there's any other comments, I will do a little research. Uh, would you like help? Um, I might. Some, some of this. I, would, I, would I might. Let me to... let me take a look. I'll probably do it right after tonight's meeting, um, just to get it going. Because if I don't, it's going to be Fourth of July next weekend, and then we're traveling for another lacrosse tournament. If you didn't see my daughter plastered all over the the item. <laughs> I'm just really proud dad. She, as a sophomore, she made like the all-stars for lacrosse. So it's kind of cool. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so we can name a street after her. We could, but not while she's alive. So I don't want to get <laughs> no, into no, that. No, we can make <laughs> there already is a Spalding street. So yeah, whatever. Okay. There you go. <laughs> All right. Um, we can just say that one's hers. Yeah. There you go. Um, All right. Um, is there anything else before we move on to the next? I think we're good, right? I, th I think we're good. I, I appreciate this. Good. I have plenty to do. Um, and yes, thank you, Theo. If there's stuff that I feel I could pass off, I will um, coordinate that with you. Yes, please. All right. All right. Fantastic. Um, that's a lot of detail and that's um and that's really terrific um so uh, thank you bill for uh carrying uh, all of this um the the fourth agenda item is um sort of following up our discussion um on uh edits to the subdivision rules and regulations i don't know if that's um i just put it there just as a um if, if there's something to discuss or we can come back to it um, another time. Um, well, I really haven't done okay. much work on that. So I need to, to basically go through what my next step is to condense the edits that we had. And what I'm gonna start doing is basically mark up what we have now and mark as move to section, you know, either yeah. Got do it. some red lines of it yeah. or say move to sections and I'm going to start writing a new one and move things in there. So going forward, we'll have what we had and how it's changing mm -hmm. and what the new one potentially would be. I think that's going to make the most sense because some things get moved and reworded, other things get deleted uh, and some just get changed. So it's it's getting a little it's getting pretty complicated and yeah. i need to sit down and spend some good time with that and not with work stuff yeah so. yeah no I, I understand that um um feel free to um ask for any of us to help uh if if you need help um we can um look at the at the calendar and, and decide when when would be um sort of a good time to check check back in um so you're not here at the next planning meeting um correct so, I have a, yeah our engagement i need to handle so um all right um 
why don't we, can we say um, August 9th? Because um, I was, uh, you know, our, our, our next agenda item is talking about the calendar. Um, and so um, I, I had some, some calendar thoughts, so. Um, so yeah, um, August right. night's work works for me for that, so. All right. Is that um, Megan, Bill, that that's okay for you? Yes. Right. Yes. Um, so August 9th, correct? Yeah. 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 All right. Item five is the the um, our, our calendar. And I was actually looking ahead through December. Um, but um, let's uh, uh, let's start with um, July and August. Um, the Jim is back. I mean, so we're. Um, I was wondering if we wanted to cancel the July twenty sixth uh, meeting. For what reason? Um, uh, wondering about workload. Wondering about uh, just summer schedule and vacations. Um, um, well, um, honestly. I have a slight conflict for the 12th, meaning I'll probably be taking that um, call on the road. Okay. But right. I still think I'll be able to be at the meeting. I'll just have to trust the internet, uh, the internet wherever I'll, I'll be. So, okay. 26th, I am available. I didn't know. Did we have a conflict on the 26th? I can't remember. No, I was just, uh, I was just wondering about about the, the summer. Um, uh, I'm good with both dates in August and really both dates in July. So uh, with Matt not being here on the 12th and I'm, again, I'm, I'm hoping it will be, if I can, if my laptop, if I can get an internet connection, otherwise it will be on my phone, which will still work. Yeah, yeah, but that's um, uh, um, I don't know. We're we're diminishing uh, diminishing returns here. Um, mm -hmm. It it sounds like maybe we should cancel um, July twelfth, um, and uh, and come back on the twenty sixth and the and the ninth. Is that reasonable? Um, we, we had in prior meetings talked about getting a, an MBTA communities update from Aaron on the on the 12th, but we could postpone that, that to the 26th. I don't, you know, Jeff. And you, you could still do it. If it's just an update, I can review it. If mm -hmm. I'm not here or any, if right. someone's not here, they can always review it, so. All right. so All right. uh, I mean that that would be the um, the primary agenda item, um, and we would have a quorum. So, mm -hmm. um, so all right. So we'll keep the twelfth and the twenty sixth. August 9th. I was um, I was going to propose that we cancel August twenty third. Um, that's uh, All right. If it's a matter of content, I understand. Yeah. I, I feel that if we do have a, something that comes up, then we should we should meet. If just to, with five members, we should be able to have a quorum. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. If something does come up, but I, I do understand. I mean, we don't have a lot of content right now. We, yeah. we uh, Matt knows that we've we've gone through this before, where we have, especially summertime, and then again holiday time, we've taken one of the meetings away. Yeah, I mean, you you can also wait till August and see if okay you need to. 
if something right. pops up and then suddenly we're under sure, sure. a time okay. constraint, then we'd probably want to have it. If we cancel it ahead of time, then mm -hmm. it's hard to uncancel. Yeah, great. That's what I was trying to say, Matt. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. I can simplify anything. So there you go. Um, the uh, so we, we can come back to um, uh, uh, November and December. Um, I um, and I'll I'll talk to to folks because it seems like there's potential for conflicts with um, town meeting and election day and other things like that. So all right. Uh, right. True, election day would probably be on the 4th of, no, sorry, November I, think, I thought it was going to be. Um, November yeah. 8th. Yeah. That's a Tuesday, right? Yeah. But, um, yeah. yeah, we will not have a meeting that day because um, election. it's second Tuesday, but it's election day, so. Yep, yeah. which is a strange kind of coincidence, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> which works well because I'll be in Sedona hopefully on November 10th to the 15th. Never been, so I'm excited. Yeah. All right. Uh, Beautiful. I love right. it. Well, I got my wish. I canceled one meeting. <laughs> well, if you want to move to December, you know, that second meeting's on the 20th. No, uh, yeah. no, actually, it's second on the, on the 27th. All right. I yeah. could say right now I will not be here, but I, I probably can take the call from Mexico. Oh, dear Lord. All right. Well, that, that we know. Um, we do lose Susan on the August 23rd. Um, she's on vacation, but, but we, can, okay. we, we can run it through. All right. Um, I lost my agenda. Um, so our, our, uh, our last item on, on the agenda is item six, items not anticipated. Um, does anybody want to start? I, I have one, sure. I mean, an obvious one that tomorrow um, night, and Theo, I imagine you were going to bring this up for yeah. master plan is tomorrow night. If you didn't sign up, please do. Um, I'll also add in there if we're just going through quick announcements. Tentatively, the Safe Streets MAPC report um, that the meeting that was canceled, uh, mm -hmm. the public meeting will now be, I believe it's scheduled for July 14th, which yep. without looking at my calendar, I think is a Thursday. It's on the town website though. Um, yep. Another upcoming event. If you did receive it in your, if you did receive the Safe Street Sunday yep. in your mm -hmm. gas and light bill, um, yep. that's, that's definitely going to happen on July 17th on Sunday from 12 to 4, setting up on the, the common bike rodeos, free helmets from the police, stuff like that. Um, one last thing, um, and I don't know if we want to talk about it as a group, but in the material that Susan dropped off, thank you, um, there's an apartment building, I believe a 10-unit apartment building proposed for one... 198 Albion Street, which right now currently is on the corner of Lake and Albion across from 7-Eleven, um, across Lake Street from the new development um, at Edge, whatever it's called now. Um, Grayson Lofts. Yeah, great, yeah, Grayson Lofts. Um, I don't know if we want to discuss that as a board. We have until July 13th to get comments in. Do we want to wait to the next meeting or I just wanted to open it up and see. I am happy, happy that this type of a, a building will be going in, meaning that whole mixed use where it has 10 units, it's three floors. It has retail restaurant space on the first floor. Um, and I didn't take a closer look to see where the parking is going, <laughs> but uh, I didn't know if as a board we had any comments. I don't. I didn't have any. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I didn't, uh, but we'll keep it on the uh, agenda for, uh, for Jim when he's back on the 12th, um, just in case. Um, 
right? That will just be a rush if we do have any comments to get that out. And I don't, as we have done in the past, quickly after a meeting, pen something, have it reviewed, send it off to the ZBA via um, email. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's all I have. Thanks. Um, uh, Megan? Um, how about you, Matt? No, nope, I don't have anything. Um, I, I was just going to um, throw a couple things um, calendar wise. Um, uh, in terms of the master plan, um, uh, Aaron forwarded us an, an email on the 20, uh, on the 15th. Um, so that's a nice email that if you, if you have folks you want to forward it to, um, I think that that's a, an easy way of, uh, keep, keeping the, the word out. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to do that tonight, um, to a bunch of, a bunch of people. Um, I won't email any of you. Um, the, um, I don't know. Um, but last, uh, at the last public forum, they did need facilitators. Um, uh, so if, uh, if you're willing to be deputized at the last minute, um, that would be great. Um, so. Um, well, Theo, like last time, I don't mind if it comes down yeah. to it, please yeah. um, include me on that facilitator list. I yeah. have no problem with it. If needed, I know last time we expected hundred and something people and we ended up with less. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, uh, yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll see. Um, I, you know, we, we're also encouraged the advisory, uh, board folks to, to participate in that too. So, um, we'll, we'll see. So, um, yeah. Um, so the, the other, um, the town has a, a festival on Friday morning, July 15th. Um, so that actually is uh, another neat uh, public event. So um, it's from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Um, yeah, so uh, I got that, that's a good one to wave the flag and we'll, we'll certainly put that in the, um, in the agenda um, or just in the notes for, for next time. Um, the mom, um, yeah. Uh, I, um, the, um, for next time, um, we are going to talk about MBTA communities, so I'll follow up with Erin about that. Um, at our last meeting, she had mentioned that she was going to get, uh, clarify some things with MAPC. Um, and so we, you know, understanding that things are, are fluid. Um, and um, we received two emails to the planning board email. Um, both actually were, um, the first one was um, a town member wanting to volunteer uh, with the planning board or other activities. So um, I, uh, I sent him all the links for the master planning process and uh, everything else. Um, so that's good. And the other was um, a student researcher, um, I think working for MAPC for the summer, uh, wanting to get some information about the effectiveness of our inclusionary zoning. Um, so, um, I'll circle back with Aaron and follow up with, with him. So other than that, um, that's all That's all I had. Um, so. Thanks. Yep. And Theo, if you need any help with digging up some of the old, I have a lot of emails and I know Matt does too, but from 2014 on, especially with the mixed use radius from the MBTA, if you need anything on that, I have some of that too. Oh, great. Okay. Um, Meaning the student project there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Um, uh, uh, this person was looking for information, like uh, sort of uh, metrics about how effective it is, and sort of uh, if we had estimates about cost or things like that. So, um, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, I don't have any of that. Yeah, um, that might be town administrator. Yeah. But Okay, well, we'll find out. Um, and it very well may be um, nothing, so. Um, well, uh, we worked, we worked um, really well um, on two of our main deliverables. Um, so uh, um, between uh, last meeting and this meeting, so that, that's terrific. Um, if there isn't any other business, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you. 
I'll second it. All, right. All in favor? Um, Megan? Yes. Bill? Yes. Matt? Yes. And myself, yes. So um, thanks, everybody. Um, yeah. Thanks. It's yeah, good. it's still light out. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Susan. Thanks, yeah. all. Yeah. Have a great yeah. evening. Thank you. Nice. Yeah, Happy, you fourth, Happy fourth, everybody. Happy fourth. See you on the parade. I'm putting my chair out now. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.